Oh, uh, what's going on, people? I am B. Dobbins for the win. And today I want to talk about the Master Chief Collection and why it will never be the masterpiece it could have been, and what future Halo games and HD remake collections can learn from its mistakes. And I think it's important we recognize that a lot of what's holding the MCC back is systemic in its game design. Problems that would persist even if the game had launched smoothly. And I want to take an in-depth look at these problems for two reasons. The first being that I want to highlight the specific issues I hope the Halo community will pressure 343 to address, such as the broken quitting penalty system, its many loopholes and gross abuses, and secondly, and perhaps more importantly, I think it's critical that every gamer understands what was fundamentally wrong with this game from its conception, so that we know what to be aware of of and what to ask for in future HD remakes next-gen ports, and remastered collections. We've already seen over a dozen of these types of products marketed. There are a dozen more announced, and furthermore, I suspect anytime we see a new generation of consoles, or when we move to any new advanced piece of hardware to play our games on, we're going to see a new wave of remakes, especially with something like virtual reality, which is on the rise right now. You can very easily imagine, you know, games that have already been remade being remade again for VR. Maybe we'll end up with an HD remake of the MCC on VR. Now that would be fucking funny, so in order to make sure that the MCC HD Virtual Reality Remake is the fucking masterpiece it should be, we gotta dissect everything that went wrong with the MCC in the first place. Now the dissection starts with 343's biggest mistake outside of failing to launch, which was their failure to implement a proper quitting penalty system. Quitting has always been a problem in Halo, and every Halo game in the past has launched with some kind of proper quitting deterrent. Halo 3, you lost ranks, Halo Reach would ban you from matchmaking for 10 minutes, and Halo 4 simply allowed players to join in progress. 343 knew this would be a problem, and there's no excuse for launching the MCC without any kind of deterrent or penalty system. It's another unfortunate consequence of this game's rush development. But what has been even more frustrating is the wholly incompetent system they finally did end up implementing. A system which has clearly done more harm than good. So, as it stands, if you quit a match in a ranked playlist, you will be deranked. Furthermore, it will negatively affect your Xbox reputation. Now, right off the bat, there are a couple problems with this. The first is that many players simply don't give a shit about their rank, which means that being deranked isn't much of a deterrent if they aren't enjoying their current match. In fact, we know there's a very common type of player who prefers to be deranked, right? Reverse boosting in order to get matched with weaker players. In other games, they have to actively kill themselves or some shit to accomplish that, but in Halo, all they gotta do is quit the matches they don't like anyways. Those matches typically being against stronger players, so this system actually streamlines the reverse boosting process for said douchebag player. And it's worth mentioning that many of the most popular playlists, such as Big Team Battle and Action Sack, are social and thus unaffected by ranks. Furthermore, proving their own gross incompetence, 343 left two significant loopholes in this system that are now being taken advantage of at an alarming rate. It is very easy to quit games and avoid any penalty altogether. Most commonly, players can quit the app. If a game type they don't like comes up, or maybe if the enemy team looks intimidating, they can simply restart the app before the match starts. Now, going this route can be annoying because it takes a minute or two to restart the game. So players looking for a more convenient way to cheat the system can instead open up the party app, come down to this leave multiplayer button, and this will take them directly to the main menu with no penalty whatsoever. Now, I'm sure I'll get some flack for sharing knowledge of these loopholes, but I would argue that it's pretty clear to anyone playing this game regularly that enough people already know about these loopholes that it's become a serious problem. The frequency at which people are quitting out of the lobby when they don't get the map they want, when they don't get the enemy team they want, is just unacceptable. And we can all pretend it's not happening and just shut the fuck up about it, but that's just delaying the inevitable. The only way this truly gets fixed is if 343 does something about it, and they're only going to do something about it if we talk about it and talk about it a lot. This is a problem that's taking a significant toll on people's overall enjoyment with this game and it needs to be addressed if this game is going to be at all viable following the release of Halo 5. Now when you do quit a match, the hit to your Xbox reputation is probably the more significant penalty. If your reputation is lowered, you'll only be matched with players who also have a lowered reputation. So this means if you're a quitter, you'll be match made with other quitters. Now, part of the problem is I don't think many players give a shit about their Xbox reputation either. I'm not even sure how many players know what that actually is, much less what happens when your rep is lowered. To most of the people I've talked to about this, I've had to actually explain to them what the Xbox reputation system is and how it works before they fully understood. But regardless, the real problem with this system is how it can be abused. Again, there is a type of player who does not want to play strong opponents. They do not want to challenge. And unfortunately, some of these players still have the audacity to give a shit about their rank at the same time. You know, they want to reach rank 50 and still somehow avoid going up against playing someone better than they are. They want all the meaningless prestige of having that number next to their name without the tangible effect that number is supposed to represent. 
represent. So what they do is abuse the reputation system by blocking and giving negative reputation feedback on strong opponents. Sometimes entire teams of four will do this shit at once and the result is that good players, honest players who are just very talented at the game, are having their reputations lowered unjustly. And once the reputation is lowered, these stronger players are stuck getting matched with other low reputation players who got that lowered rep legitimately because they are quitters and betrayers and AFKers and racists and haters. So the better you do, the worse the game gets. The best players are unfairly being quarantined off with the unruly mob of treacherous villains who got their low reps legitimately. It's entirely unfair. The whole system as it stands is a mess. There's very little evidence to suggest it actually deters quitting or is having any kind of positive impact, while at the same time it is obviously having a very negative impact in a number of different ways. This system should not be implemented into Halo 5 or future Halo games, period. Now I know I'm pretty sure Halo 5 is going to have a join in progress option, but if they have game modes, uh, you know, like MLG game modes or whatever, where people joining in isn't an option, they can't supplement that with this kind of a system. It's a system that's too easily abused. Now, of course, the original implementation of this system was in response to the unprecedented amount of quitting that was taking place on this game. And I think it's important we take a look at what was, and in many ways still is, driving that quitting. And this is one of those things that's not necessarily 343 sucking balls, but simply the result of how fast this industry is moving into such uncharted territory with the HD remake phenomenon. I know Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg has mentioned that a remake collection of old Call of Duties is something they talk about and think about a lot. That's the quote. There's a petition out there somewhere uh, for a Modern Warfare collection that has a few hundred thousand signatures. If they decide to go this route, they need to pay close attention to what went wrong with the MCC and what was driving this quitting. The MCC's biggest shortcoming, and again, not necessarily 343's fault, is its failure to properly accommodate the psychology and preferences of its player base with a collection like this. When you sell a game like this that is a collection of other games, you have a very diverse pool of player preferences. You have a lot of people buying this game only wanting to play one game in the collection exclusively. You have a lot of people who are buying the game for just Halo 2 or just Halo 1. And then I think pretty much everyone has certain games in the collection which they refuse to play outright, okay? Or they simply see playing those games as a chore. And I'm not trying to make these guys sound like douchebags because I'm one of them. Outside of Action Sack, I don't want to play Halo 4 or Halo 2 Anniversary. When those game modes are selected, I am disappointed. I have the urge to quit. I don't give in to that urge because I don't want to be a fucking hypocrite, but I'm not going to pretend that I haven't given in a time or two. And I think everyone gets that urge with at least one, but usually a few games in the collection. I think a lot of players have opposite preferences to me. I think a lot of people prefer H2A and H4 and hate having to play Halo 2 Classic or CE. And I don't hold anyone's preferences against them. You know, to each his own. But this is a problem that has been driving the quitting and plaguing this game from the start. Now, the community's solution has been to implement a sort of de facto code of honor, which demands that yes, sometimes you have to play something you don't like and you shouldn't quit just because you didn't get what you didn't want. And unfortunately, that's the closest we can get to an actual solution at this point. But really, most people don't give a shit about the Reddit code of honor. You see people with their Halo 4 and I quit clan tags and such. And the bitter truth is that in this particular instance, they do have a fair argument. I'm not saying I agree with it, but they do have a fair argument. If somebody is coming home from work and they just want to relax and play video games, and they only have a limited window of recreational time, maybe an hour or two before bedtime, they shouldn't have to risk sacrificing that recreational time doing something they don't have fun doing just to be altruistic for the sake of strangers on the internet, right? Now, Code of Honor enthusiasts might say, go play a different fucking game then. But I think all this animosity and argument between Halo MCC players misses the bigger point which is that ultimately, anytime a game requires its players to do something they don't want to do, that they don't have fun doing, anytime, anytime a game needs an honor system like this, that's a flaw in the game design. And if someone refusing to do something they don't want to do ruins the game for other players, that is a flaw in the game design. But it's a complex flaw, and it's specific to a collection-based game like this, which means it's an unprecedented flaw, really. But I think I know how it could be solved, not that it ever will be on the MCC, but for the sake of the future of the HD remake genre. And first, let me just say, I think from the beginning, trying to fit five games into this motherfucker was maybe a bit too much. It, it dilutes the playlist, it significantly increases the chances that you end up playing something you don't want to play in cross-game playlists or what have you. It means a lot of the time you get three options to vote for and you don't like any of them. It means having to learn all five different games and adjust to five different skill gaps, and these are all very different Halo games at the end of the day. And this can kind of fuck up the ranking system, right? Having a ranking system or skill-based matchmaking system in a cross-game playlist can possibly do more harm than good, because if 
4 in the Team Slayer playlist, for example, you might be really good at Halo 4, but terrible at Halo CE, right? And you get matched with someone with the same rank, but the thing is, they're good at CE and terrible at Halo 4, and the result is that depending on what game gets chosen, that ranking will be completely inaccurate. The skill levels will be completely lopsided, and thus the entire purpose of the ranking system defeated. Uh, and worst of all, the sheer amount of games crowds out the playlist in such a way that you only ever get to scratch the surface of these games without ever really getting to explore the depth of the content that each game has to offer. One of the big problems with this game for a while was that like 90% of the matches you were playing were Team Slayer, right? Now granted, they've made some progress towards alleviating that with Action Sack, but the amount of content can almost limit your options because when you're voting, it's incredibly unlikely that you get to play the map, game mode, and game you want all at the same time. So for example, I'm fucking burnt on Team Slayer, but the only non-Team Slayer option here is H4, and I don't want to play freaking H4, right? So it's much harder for me to reach peak enjoyment with the game. It feels like a lot of the time people are having to choose between, like, the lesser of two evils. You know what I mean? Not that they're evils, but, y you know, they're, they're having to choose the option that they dislike the least, as opposed to the one they like the most. You know what I'm saying? And, and I mean, to an extent, that's what you have in any game. That's how it is in any game, right? You don't always get the map you want. But the thing is, in any other game, you always get the game mode you want because there's enough room in the game to give each game mode its own playlist. And of course, you always get the game you want because that's the fucking game you're playing. So the collection format dramatically increases the rate at which you are having to play shit you don't want to play. And it also dramatically decreases the rate at which you get to play the game modes and or maps you are most interested in playing. So I thought about all this for a while. And because I'm a fucking badass... I have the ultimate solution that would fix mostly everything and make mostly everyone mostly happy most of the time. What the MCC and future collection titles need is a preference system, right? Okay, we see this in Evolve, because there are five distinctly different characters with very different gameplay in every Evolve match, right? So what they let the players do is set their preferences in order. So my first choice is Assault, then Medic, then Trapper, then Support, then the Monster. And I can change that at any time in the main menu, right? So when I'm looking for a match, it's going to take those preferences into account and try to match me with people who have preferences that mesh with my own preferences. So ideally, they would find four other people who have different first choices uh, than me, right? Right? The Evolve system is actually kind of complex for that reason, because it's not about finding someone with similar preferences, it's about ideally finding someone with as different preferences as possible. But it would be easier in the MCC. Imagine if they simply let you set preferences for each game. So I love Halo 3, that'll be my number one preference. I hate Halo 4, that'll be my last preference. And then when I'm matchmaking, it takes those preferences into account and it tries to match me with other players who have Halo 3 as their number one preference or near the top of their preferences. And these preferences should be weighed before weighing people's ranks even, and this would help avoid that problem where you have really good H3 players getting matched with great CE players who are terrible at H3. You know, I guarantee you everyone's top preferences are going to be the games they're the most skilled at, not only because they have more fun when they're doing well, but because they get better at the game they play most often, and they're going to be playing the game they enjoy the most, the most often. So it'll help increase the accuracy of skill-based matchmaking as well. And then, when you have a lobby together, instead of just showing them three random options picked out of five different games with a bazillion different game modes and maps, let the lobby vote for a game first. So you give them three options based on what the top three average preferences were in the lobby. They vote for a game. And then they get to see three different choices from that game. This will allow everyone to explore the actual depths of each game instead of just skimming their surfaces. So first, you have Halo 3, H2A and HCE, okay? They vote for H2A. The lobby votes for H2A, right? Then you get three new H2A options. So you get, you know, Team Slayer, Team Objective, and, and maybe like a wacky H2A mode, but you get to see three different H H2A maps and game modes, and you get to explore the depth of that game more than if you were just, you know, scratching the surface with one possible option some of the time. And that's not to say that everybody will get what they want all the time. There will probably still end up being times where you have to play a game or map you don't want to play. But again, that's kind of true in every game. And this system would reduce the rate at which people are doing shit they don't want to do and dramatically increase the rate at which they do get to do shit they do want to do and maybe bring those rates to, uh, you know, levels that are more in line with just a regular game. And something else that I think would help encourage players to stick it out and play through matches, even if it's not their ideal match, is a proper incentives and progression system. Presently within the MCC, as soon as someone stops having fun in the match, there's no rational incentive to finish the match. And the problem with the MCC is that if you're stuck playing a game that you genuinely don't want to play, for a lot of people that's, you know, Halo 1, like I said, for me it's Halo 4, then you have no rational reason to stay, right? Now, other games have always recognized this and included some sort of incentivized progression system. This is why COD has always had the seemingly arbitrary prestige system because even though it is pointless for any practical purposes, developers know that ego, even just the ego boost from a tiny little emblem or whatever, is enough to get people to finish matches and quit less using progression as the stick and carrot. And that includes Halo as well, obviously. You know, you'll recall the credit system they had for custom 
customizing your armor in both Reach and Halo 4. I actually really like the Reach system. I liked working my way up to the Lightning Helmet and feeling like a badass when I got it. And what was great about those systems was that it gave you a rational reason to finish games. You know, as it stands, let's say you're in a Slayer match in the MCC and you're up by 20 kills and one of the enemies has already quit. Everybody knows it's over. People are kind of starting to fuck around. You know, betrayals, AFKs maybe. What reason do you have to stay in the match? What reason do you have to keep trying? Like, why are people going to FK and, and, and fucking around? Like, what incentive is there to keep trying once you can tell who's going to win? You know what I mean? You, you don't actually get anything for winning. So if you've already concluded that the match is over, and that happens fairly regularly on any game, quitting the match to start looking for a new match that much faster is like the rational decision. There's not really any penalty to leaving, and there's no rational incentive to stay. And gamers are very rational, pragmatic people. You know, they do what's in their best interests. And it's up to the game developers to shape the game in a way in which the gamers always have rational incentives that complement the system as a whole. So there are some armor customization options in the MCC, but I don't think they actually require you to unlock anything. Uh, and they're extremely limited in scope, especially compared to past Halos. I mean, I think you have like six or seven preset options for your Halo 3 appearance in the MCC, and it just means nobody ever really gets to stand out. And even if they could, because it's not an incentivized progression system, none of their shit would actually mean anything, right? Like in Halo Reach, when you had all the most expensive gear and that lightning helmet you look like a scary fucking dude you know and when you'd see someone on the battlefield who's all pimped out like that you'd think twice about engaging them you'd be a little nervous you know and, and it was the joy of knowing you could evoke that emotional response in other people as well and that's what made you work for credits and even when you know the match is over you're still trying to get in as many headshot medals as you can and get as many credits as you can and a system like that i think would allow every mcc player to have that much more fun on this game and of course more importantly those are the big things that any future HD remake collection needs to do very differently from how they were done in the MCC. Cross-game playlists create a whole new host of challenges that cannot be handled in the same way they are handled in a single game. The For the Win query of the day is what games would you like to see remastered for the next gen and what improvements, or excuse me, the current gen, hold your horses everybody, the current gen, I said current gen, not next gen, and what improvements would you like to see in those remastered versions? Please remember to rate the video. This is Batman signing out.